Good morning and afternoon. It's Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Welcome all. I'm Kane and I'm joined with David, also known as the Workday Sharing Guy. Also joining us is Denise from the Sharing Team. Welcome to the first of airing of the Sharing Show. Kane, can you please tell me a little bit more about Zoom? Certainly, just some housekeeping. So everyone's lines are muted. If you have any questions, you can see at the bottom of the screen, you should see a chat icon and you can use the chat to raise a question. Um, this is a weekly show. You will get uh, reminders each week. And so now over to the start, we're gonna start with Denise, our organizer, who's gonna kick us off with our first Kahoot. Okay, we're going to start with a survey Kahoot just to find out a little bit about who's online with us today. If you get your smartphone and um, just go to Kahoot.it, you'll be able to join us. So we do this a lot with the share -a So if you've joined us for share a you're probably familiar with this. It's just quick. We just have two questions this morning and we'll get started. And people could do this on their computer as well as a smartphone, right? They just open up kahoot.it on safari yes, or any, any device will work Denise, it's asking me for a pin okay we'll get the pin in just a moment you can see the pin at the top of your screen but i'll also read it to you it's six nine two six two five and then it's going to ask you to put in a name we already have our first player in Okay, I see lots of people joining, over 30. And there will be another Kahoot, so for people who were not ready for this one, at the end of the show, um, just have a browser tab open, or again, on a smartphone, to kahoot.it. Um, but it's looking to me like, yep. We're ready to go, here's our first question. What time zone are you in? So red is Pacific, blue is mountain, yellow is central, and green is Eastern. So choose which best fits your area. It looks like most everyone's from the Eastern time zone. We have a couple over here on the West Coast with us. So that's awesome. Let's go to the next question. How long have you been doing work day? Uh, red is less than a year. Blue is one to two years. Yellow is two to five years. And green is over five years. Looks like we have a good mix today. Everybody's in that middle bracket mostly. So that's a good start for today, I think. Thank you guys for all taking part. Denise, we're at five minutes. All right, so hi everybody. Um, our time check of five minutes gives me an extra minute here to talk. This is David, the Workday Sharing Guy. I have an agreement with uh, Workday that I'll give a disclaimer, make sure everybody knows I am not a Workday employee. Those of you who know Workday know that actually in the Workday system, what Workday calls WOW, Workday on Workday, I actually am a Workday employee, it's just I'm not active. I have a higher date in the year 2007. Um, I was employee number 149 and I left about six years ago. The other part of this disclaimer, in no way uh, anything I say or what anyone says here is represents Workday. We're all Workday customers. The idea of share is this is customers sharing knowledge with each other. This is not training. This is just Workday knowledge sharing. Um, I would like to say though, I highly recommend the Workday training. Denise, what's next on our agenda? Up next, we have the I Love Workday Photo Contest. Okay, so this is David, the Workday Sharing Guy again. And you see here a picture of Something I posted on community. It was a perfect picture a few days before Valentine's Day. I happened to be wearing one of my first Workday shirts from 2007. Had an opportunity to do my three finger W Workday salute. And I had this idea once I saw this picture. What if we had a virtual card that we sent around the office, kind of like when it's somebody's birthday or anniversary, a milestone, 10 years. 
of working at a company, you send around the card, everyone signs it. Of course, it's like, shh, don't tell Workday about this, but it was on community, so somewhat of a joke. But people told, several people told stories or explained why they love Workday so much. And this all started actually on LinkedIn. I saw somebody just say, I love Workday, and they were just making a comment on somebody else's post. So it gave me this idea, let's have a virtual card. Well, a lot of people sent in stories or pictures, and so I decided to create um, another page to have people vote for the photos, and that's to see which photo is the best photo in, in this I Love Workday photo contest. Now, I had also said I will collect everyone's photos and deliver them to Dave and Neil. I was sort of joking, but then I realized maybe people actually thought I was going to do that, so I actually printed off, you see here a stack of papers with the story on the left and the photos, and I wrote a uh, Valentine's uh, Day card to David, David and Neil. Turns out it's actually um, going to be a birthday card as well. But uh, I went ahead and, and dropped that off at uh, that workday office. The security guard said he can't even tell me if Neil is in the building, but it uh, turns out there was a VP there in the lobby, and she um, delivered the card and the um, stories to Neil's office. That's great, David. Denise, who is our first special guest? Our first special guest is Lynn with her I Love Workday photo and story. Hi, Denise. Thank you. Um, and thank you, David, uh, for inviting me. Um, uh, and also coming up with this idea. Um, when we saw it on Community, um, Robin, who works with me, she saw it, she forwarded it to me because she knows that I just love Workday. And she thought I'd be all over this. Um, and. So I fielded the question with Cindy in HR to see if she wanted to get together with a picture. It was snowing. There was a big snowstorm that night. Um, but it was still snowing. We had a late start. And um, so she came over here with a banner sign. And we went outside, kind of walking around the campus, looking for the best background um, with this big sign. And um, so we took some pictures. Uh, we kind of went out at the wrong time because all the students were changing classes. So we were hoping to do it in private, but not as much as students watching us, which made it fun. Um, and we also um, uh, took some angel pictures um, and we, we shared that as well. So it was a lot of fun. We came back into the um, inter office to warm up and dry up because of the angel and uh, posted it. And um, that was after Cindy came up with a sonnet. Um, which was perfect. Um, so I thank David for coming up with this idea. It just made our day that day. And it's been fun just reading the comments that everyone else is putting as to why they love work day. Um, so thank you, it was great. Thanks, Lynn. Denise, can we see that angel picture? Right, here's Lynn's um, angel picture. And then Lynn is gonna talk a little bit about her work day hat. Another time I had uh, opportunity to work with David um, was through this work day hat. Um, I had, um, he was um, helping us with a, with a project um, a few years back and I did something on work day and he said, what did you just do? Um, and I said, I, and what, what he saw was I went to a new tab, but I did not write mouse on the tab um, and um, select open the new tab. Uh, the new tab just appeared and he says, how did you do that? Um, and um, so I told him how to do it, and he told me about this workday hacks, and he said that would be a perfect workday hack. Um, so what I posted, um, and I know many people do know it, but I also know a lot of people don't know it, including workday folks, is um, if you do want to open up in a new tab, you do not have to right mouse on the tab and open new tab. You can just hold your control key down and click on the link and it opens a new tab. And if you have a Mac, I think it's command. Um, and um, it's great, it's so much easier. I love sharing it. Um, I've been known to share it um, in the airport with some workday clients when we were all leading Rising a couple years ago too. So um, I thought this is a great opportunity to share it because once you get into the habit of doing it, um, it works pretty slick. All right, Lynn. Um... Thank you. Um, thank you for explaining that. So that's Workday Hack number 19. If you see uh, the community um, title up there is WDH0019. 
Um, so, Lynn, this is, I think, a recent picture I took. There are over 1,400 people who have seen that page. And over four, or at 40 comments, which you might think, okay, 40 comments. But when you take a look at the actual pictures of these comments, it gives you an idea, I think, Lynn, of how many people you have helped or, you know, how many people felt strongly enough that they wanted to make a comment. So I'm going to do a little plug here for these Workday Hacks or just a brief history, uh, which is it started back in March of 2017. The most recent hack doesn't have a number on it was October 2018. And it kind of slowed down at one point. We were up to Workday Hack number 25 and 26. 25 came in August of 2017. And then there was eight months before anyone put another Workday hack. And actually, I didn't know this. I don't look every day. Hey, did someone add a Workday hack? Um, so here's the interesting thing. That date right there, April 24th, if you take a look at this other post for um, a Tola rug in San Antonio where I was a guest speaker, at, it's Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, back when each of those states didn't have dozens and dozens of customers. Um, they still have that group. I went to San Antonio. Some guy looked at me and said, oh, you're the guy from the Workday Hacks. And I looked at him and said, oh, yeah, there hasn't been any for several months. You know, at that point, eight months. But actually, it was the day after that one that was posted on April 24th. I actually looked and I said, wait a minute, someone posted just yesterday. So I went ahead and opened this up. Workday Hacks are back. Um, and then since then, only one or two, right? This one came up as 27. The other unnamed one is at 28. So all you have to do is do a search for Workday Hacks. I think you'll see this. Or if you want to create one, do uh, 29. And But um, you could do a search to make sure you all aren't racing to do it at the same time during this show. <laughs> do a search for WDH0029 to make sure it doesn't exist. All right, Denise, we're at 12 minutes, right on schedule. What is next on our agenda? Up next, we have a brief history of share -thons. Okay, and we're going to be, this is David again, the Workday Sharing Guy. Um, by now, you probably know my voice. I was asked um, many years ago, at the time I had seven years of Workday instead of 11, what are best practices for report tags? And at that time, I knew how to create report tags. I knew what they did, but I didn't know best practices. So I opened up a page to say, hey, customers, we're the ones who are practicing. What do you do for report tags? And that page um, had several reads on it. Um, and it became quite popular. So let's move on, right? I could hear people like, enough about share -thon. Tell me about Boomerang. Up next is Boomerangs. Denise, who is our next special guest? Up next, we have Mike from Philly with Boomerang Integration. I wanted to take a minute to share a Workday Boomerang, which I developed from a modification, actually, from a training example from Bert Training. As you mentioned, it's really good to get some training. To start, let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, Magellan's made a few acquisitions over the past couple of years, and what leadership wanted was a BERT statement for all of our employee programs, including compensation and benefits and PTO for a newly acquired employee. Uh, they recognize that the employees may have a real limited knowledge of Workday and SOAP managers as well, so we want it to be completely seamless. So we decided on putting it in the uh, My Documents section of Workday, which used to be called the W Drive up until about six months ago. It needed to be available on day one so the manager can sit down with their directs and go over the statement. So Boomerang was perfect here. So here's how it works. Essentially what we do here, step one, we run the, the report from Workday, the RAS report, and it's split up by employee in step two. And then in step three, we extract some manager and some employee data out. Um, so we got the workday idea, the manager and the employee. And then in step four, the BERT statements created actually. And finally, this put integration message, the final step of the uh, integration is where we actually tell Workday that we need to put it into the manager's W drive. And that's, we get the data from step three. So, so that's it on a very simple boomerang integration. Okay, Mike, what I'm gonna say, cause I didn't really um, plug the fact that we have a boomerang share -a coming up in March. Um, so I know you'll be speaking more about these um, during that share -a Yes. I think correct. of a boomerang, right? You pull data out of Workday, you do some massaging and you put the data back in. That's the case of pulling data out of Workday and creating BERT, creating output using BERT and putting that on a W drive. Correct. Um, so, so I have one yeah. of those too, actually. Ah, okay. Um, Tell us about it. 
Sure. Um, this one's a little geeky, but I really do love it. Um, it was like a personal pet peeve of mine that parsing resumes, um, whenever you had the resume name in all caps at the top of the resume, it put it into Workday with all caps and it was, wasn't proper names. So I decided to try and solve for it. And, and think of this as like an 80% solution at best because you can go down this huge rabbit hole about names and how names are uh, capitalized and think of like the Kirk, which is a lowercase d and then the lowercase c and then a capital K. It gets really complicated. <laughs> but basically what I did is we use this thing called in, in coding called reg, regular expressions or regets to be able to search for some things, some names that are in a certain way, and then output them in a per, uh, different way. So what, if you look at the, the, up here, the code is up top, the reg, regular expressions, and you look at some input and some sample output, that's what you're gonna get when you output it. And essentially what you do is you start with a RAS report, and you can do it different ways as well. Um, but this is just a RAS report that uh, runs when somebody gets interviewed, and it checks and sees if they have an all caps name, and then it puts it into the integration. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, trans we'll use the step two, the XSLT transform to run this bit of code to output the code. And then step three is when we call the put candidate API, and we put the data back into Workday. And then we do a little bit of funky stuff in step four, just uh, getting the, out, the output from that and logging it uh, as, a, as a just in case. You could do some more interesting stuff as well with that, with uh, error checking and stuff. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Denise, we are at 18 minutes. Next on our agenda are search tips and IDs. This is a picture of what most people here can see, hopefully at the top, where you enter into a search in Workday to find something. And um, a lot of you actually will enjoy um, hints. Uh, for example, BP colon or RD colon, BP colon to find hire instead of typing in the word hire to find a higher business process. If you wanted to find a report that you knew had DNU, which some people use for do not use, you could do RD colon. You could put a space after if you want, but not a space before. So these are called prefixes. If you don't know what all those prefixes are, there's over 200 of them, you could put a question mark in the search and press enter. So our next special guest is going to talk a little bit about these prefixes as well as IDs. And um, you know, what most of us know is that John Smith in our system is actually 17348 or something like that. So IDs not only are an employee's, all objects in work they have an ID. And so that way you could send data to other systems and other systems could reply to you with information. So I just wanna make sure everyone understands both this prefix and IDs um, because that's important to know. Thanks, David. Denise, who is our next special guest? Our next special guest is Floyd from Tennessee with WID Brainstorms. The I uh, noticed that this was actually on the last Workday hack that was listed too, so I didn't know that at the time, but it is a, a really useful tool for productivity in Workday, and some people know how to do it and some people don't. But in Workday, like David was saying, there's a lot of different IDs, but with each instance of each object, Workday assigns what, what would be called a global unique ID, or which is what, kind of what GWID stands for, that they call Workday ID. And what's useful about that is it allows you to go straight to that particular item without having to go through all of the overhead of other searches uh, using the WID colon search prefix when that David talked about using the search prefixes. Unfortunately, that still uh, it's not completely open to everybody in Workday. It requires access to set up system, integration build, or integration reports to get the Workday ID. But if you have that, uh, then you should be able to do it. Also, I'd like to see Workday make that available to all report writers and calc field developers to speed their productivity. To get there, uh, you can either go to a related action off of any instance that says integration IDs, view IDs. Uh, there's another way to get that to 
go to run the task called integration IDs and put in a business object. That particular one I use when we go to upgrade all our AP or our uh, EIB template models to the next API version. You can get a whole list of them out, put them in Excel, and then very quickly go straight to each one you want by using the WID. Uh, and then there's also options to go into a particular report, like we make copies of the do not use reports and put the actual width of the replacement field. So instead of having to search for the field name, we, we actually use concatenate text to prefix, prefix it with WID colon, and then you can go paste that straight into the search to find the item. And how can you use it? And we talked about why it's so fast because it bypasses all the search indexes, but you can use it in global search by going straight to global search and pasting in that search term. Uh, you can also be in the middle of, say, updating a report and you need to get a particular field or particular instance of something and you can paste it right into a prompt dialog box like it shows in the second example. Another thing I use that for that's really handy is, let's say you have a report that's got 15 or 20 numeric fields on there and you want to apply consistent numeric formatting. It's a lot faster to go into the first one and grab the ID of the field and then just continue to paste, paste, paste into the next ones instead of having to play mouse gymnastics with the related actions to get all of those set. And I think that was all I had. All right, Floyd, I like what you said about the mouse gymnastics. And I am going to answer the question here. I, I'll beat Denise or, or Kane to this. Um, your question. It does sound good to me. <laughs> I, I will mention one other thing real quick, David, if you got one more minute on that, okay. because back back on the, the earlier one, they were talking about, you know, the control click for URL links. Uh, I've been experimenting with a couple of add-ons to Chrome that particularly during workday update testing that would allow you to potentially mark a block of URLs on your screen and then actually open up all of those links in a new in new tabs without you having to go in to do each one. So we did that with like report testing to where we could actually open up five or six reports at a time in new tab and quickly go through and test them. So there are some things out there that might be Chrome add-ons that you can experiment with as well. Is that on community Floyd? No, I hadn't found one that was stable enough to, to post it yet. Okay, well, here here is your brainstorm. Um, so for those who want to upvote Floyd's idea here to help people make searching faster with WIDs, currently at 37, we'll keep a close eye on that. All right, Denise, we are at 26 minutes, so we have a little extra time. So now we'd like to do our wrap-up Kahoot. If you'll go back into your Kahoot IT, you will need to refresh and get a new pen because this is going to be a quiz on some of the things we went over today. So the pen for this quiz is 645855. And while we're waiting for people to join, um, this is not like, like Denise said, it's not a survey, this is actual quiz. So you will get points if you get the right answer. And I am looking, Denise, at the total in case you're getting ready to get it started. We are up to 40 now. Um, I would say go ahead and let's get it started. All right, here we go. There's three questions. The boomerangs we heard about today are best described as red, employees who leave and are rehired, blue, Valentine's chocolates regifted twice, Yellow, take information out, make some slight change and put it back in, or green, enter question mark in the search box. It's like almost everybody got that one right. So it's to take information out, make a slight change and put it back in. Nobody voted for the Valentine chocolate twice. <laughs> okay. So Miss B's in the lead. The WID we heard about today is used to find the area of a rectangle, which is red, 
Blue is helpful in speeding up searches for objects. Yellow is an acronym for wireless information device or green an acronym for why I don't do integrations. We all got that one right. Nice job. David F is in the lead. We have one more question. What color is Logan's shirt today? You guys might have seen Logan a few times. Is it red for red? Blue is blue, yellow is yellow, or green is green? Red, her shirt was red. You may have seen her. It was a little bit like uh, finding um, Waldo today with Logan. It was nice to have her visit. Let's see. With a, In the lead is David F. And Miss B's in second. And Mike, you took third today. All right, King. We're down to the final one minute and 10 seconds or so. Um, we'll have to uh, follow up with... Uh, uh, people um, on what they what they've won for um, winning the first ever Kahoot quiz from the Workday Sharing Show. To find our latest uh, news, if you guys will go to LinkedIn to my page for Denise, and we will have we have a Sharing Show group there. If you want to uh, participate and ask questions or be a presenter, let us know. Wow, that was a great first show, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, as has been said, we're going to post this out onto social channels, and we have recorded this, and we'll send you all a link. We look forward to seeing you all next week. So have a great work day. Wow.